Hello and thank you so much for coming by the channel today. I really appreciate it. My name is Susan. This channel is Road Reads. And today I am going to do the mid-year book freak out tag. I think I've done this every year. It's always such a great reflection on my reading so far and I'm excited to share with you. And I'd love to hear your answers to any of these questions. So if you feel so inspired, leave a comment below in answer to any or all of the following prompts. The first prompt, which is best book you've read so far in 2024. And I have two, two I have to share with you. They've both won the Pulitzer Prize. Okay, so the uh, the one I just finished, I don't know, about a week ago, is G-Man, J. Edgar Hoover, and the Making of the American Century by Beverly Gage. She's a professor at Yale University, professor of U.S. history. This won the Pulitzer Prize in 2023 for Best Biography and absolutely deserved it. It is so well researched. The only frustrating part is we don't have all the information for various reasons. We don't have all the information we, as an inquiring mind, as an inquiring re reader wants to know. It just feels so rich with material. I, I was thoroughly impressed with this book. As you may remember, I started this last year. And uh, even though I had the hard copy book, but I, I prefer to read it on my Kindle. So I had gotten the Kindle book from the library and when it expired, I never went back to it, even though I was totally into it. Uh, so finally, I just went ahead and bought the Kindle audio combo and finished it this past week five stars. I mean, we are with Hoover from birth to death. I kept telling myself, stop judging and just learn because you do get enraged <laughs> when, when we think of our personal and civil liberties. Uh, it's an enraging to a, a modern reader in, in many ways, but how intriguing this book is. And she writes it in a way that makes you want to keep reading. It is so jam-packed with U.S. history, like just in the best kind of way. The first question being best book you've read so far in 2024, I, ha I have to give it to G-Man. And then, again, it doesn't say favorite book, it says best book for me. And I get, I get this book is not for everyone. Absolutely, this book wouldn't have been for Susan you know, circa 20 years ago. <laughs> it is so distressing and disturbing and rough reading. But as far as the quality of the writing, as far as the plot and the pacing, and on top of it, if you've read David Copperfield, which you don't need to have read, but if you have read, it's just such an added bonus because you see, oh, this character is that character from Dickens. Oh, this plot point is that plot point from Dickens. That made this book bearable for me. So of 2024 so far, I'm gonna go with those as the two best books. Both of them very disturbing in their own ways. Okay, number two, best sequel you've read so far in 2024. It goes beyond saying that anytime I read a book from the Thursday Murder Club, that's a favorite, which I did back in January. But for this question, best sequel you've read so far in 2024, I'm going to go with The Fellowship of the Ring, which is the first in the Lord of the Rings series, but I'm considering it a sequel because I think you absolutely need to read The Hobbit first before reading The Fellowship of the Ring and the entire Lord of the Rings series. I know for me, this wouldn't have been half as enjoyable if I wasn't already in love with The Hobbits, you know, with Bilbo Baggins from The Hobbit. So I just, I just loved this. It's, yes, it's an easy answer for me that this is the best sequel I've read so far in 2024. And um, just to note, I did just finish The Two Towers uh, the day before yesterday, I think. So now I only have the third book or fourth book, however you want to look at it, uh, by Tolkien in this series. And I'll probably wait, I'll probably wait a couple of months, but Bill and I just started watching the Two Towers movie last night and it's like 
24 hours, the extended version. So we'll, we'll probably finish it today or tomorrow. Okay, the next question. New release, you, I don't have my glasses on, but I can just, I can just barely read the type. New release, you haven't read yet, but want to. I'm sure there are others, but I am going with uh, Eric Larson's latest book, which is The Demon of Unrest, a saga of hubris, heartbreak, and heroism at the dawn of the Civil War. So this just came out in April. I've read Dead Wake, Devil in the White City, Thunderstruck, and The Splendid in the Vile. I'm just, I'm a big fan of Eric Larson. Uh, I, Dead Wake, just amazing. Devil in the White City, very interesting and disturbing at the same time. Same with Thunderstruck. But yeah, Splendid in the, the Splendid in the Vile made it into my top 10 the year I read it. So yeah, big fan of Eric Larson and I'm looking forward to The Demon of Unrest. If you have read it, let me know in the comments what you thought. Okay, number four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I have to admit, and I think I've admitted this before, I, I'm not... I don't make myself be all that in tune with what's coming out. I admire that other people do and I benefit from their research, but honestly, I, I really haven't watched many of those type of videos lately of what's coming out soon. But just know this, I am twiddling my thumbs. I am just waiting for the next Donna Tart book and I am just waiting for the next Emily St. John Mandel book which I feel like we're going to get the Mandel book before we get the Tarte book. But where's Donna? She's supposed to give us one every 10 years. And, and that hasn't come. If you know any, if you've got some intel, I should have researched it on either of those two authors and when their next book is going to come out. Let me know in the comments. Okay. Uh, biggest disappointment. This was easy for me. Now I still gave it three stars because it is Charles Dickens but A Tale of Two Cities, I was so disappointed. I had to force myself to get through this book. I loved Bleak House, although it took me a while to get into, but once I got into it, I absolutely loved Bleak House. I loved David Copperfield. Uh, I read this as a kid in school. I don't know, was it junior high or high school? It was a long time ago. And I remember loving A Tale of Two Cities. I did not love it when I reread it this year. What a struggle to get through. Um, I didn't feel any connection to the characters. I didn't care about them. Like I cared about them in Bleak House and David Copperfield. So was that me? Was it just the timing of reading this book or what? Because a lot of people say this is their favorite Dickens book. <laughs> Uh, but no, not for me. Easily my biggest disappointment. And I've had some disappointing reads this year, but this was the biggest disappointment because I just assumed I was going to love it. I just it kind of, I, I the way my Dickens reading was going, I just thought, oh, my favorite Dickens book is going to be the most recent one I read. So that proved that very wrong. Okay, the next one is biggest surprise. Now, I had several I could have put in this category, but in order not to duplicate, I went with Casey Sepp's Furious Hours, Murder, Fraud, and the Last Trial of Harper Lee. Now, in one way, it's the biggest surprise because why the heck didn't I read this when it came out? I knew about it. it it's as if it went in one ear and out the other. <laughs> I knew about this book coming out and having been such a big Harper Lee devotee, I would have thought I would have read this right when it came out. Uh, but the reason I'm really putting this as my biggest surprise is how much I enjoyed this. Now, I don't think this book is going to be for everyone. Let me tell you why. She, uh, much like Larson does, only maybe not in the same way. But when you when you're reading an Eric Larson book, you know, like Dead Wake. Okay, you're talking about the sinking of the Lusitania, right? But he adds so much more about what is going on at that time into the narrative. And she does that too. I just think for some people, this the way she does it is going to annoy them. For me, by and large, it worked. There were a few diversions I could have either had shortened or done without. But I just, I devoured this book. I was so into it. If you are a Harper Lee fan, 
you absolutely need to read this book. But just know you're not even going to get to the Harper Lee part until you're two thirds through this book. Okay, the next prompt, number seven, favorite new author, debut or new to you? Uh, I wasn't sure what I wanted to answer for this, but I went with Colm Tobin. Uh, I'll put a picture of him here. So I've not read his books before. I know many of you probably have. Uh, so the first book I read of his was, and I just read this not long ago, was Long Island, and I loved it. I absolutely loved Long Island. This is his most recent release. The way he told the story was so subdued. And I thought, this takes real talent to tell it the way he's telling it. For me to be in, into the, the way he built the characters and made me care for them because I had not read Brooklyn, the prequel to this. And uh, so I read Long Island first, and then as soon as I finished it, I read Brooklyn. I didn't enjoy Brooklyn as much as Long Island, but certainly I think I need to read more of his books. So I'm going to go with Colm Tobin as my answer for now. Newest fictional crush. Now, this may slightly be influenced by the movie, but I'm gonna go with Aragon slash Strider, our ranger from the north in the Fellowship of the Ring in the, in the Two Towers. Is it partly influenced by uh, the actor who played him in the movies? Maybe, but uh, yeah, looking at my list of books, I did not have a lot of options for a new fictional crush. So yes. I will go with him. Let me know if you agree with me in the comments. Okay, newest favorite character keeping this book up because it's going to go to Samwise Gamgee. I just love Sam. I, I just think he's the best. He's so loyal. He's so faithful. He's so courageous in his own way and yet longing as a hobbit would and as I would too for the creature comforts of home through all this dreadful journey he is going through. So yes, newest favorite character is Sam. Okay, the next question is book that made you cry. If there was a book that made me cry, I've already forgotten. I was looking at my list and I thought, I feel like I did cry at a book and maybe even talked about it. So if you remember better than me, let me know in the comments. But what I decided to do was just the most upsetting book. And, and that's, well, it could be either of these. But no, Demon Copperhead was even more upsetting than G-Man. Although I don't know that, that I should say that since G-Man actually happened. But I mean, this happens too. And uh, it doesn't have to be in poverty-stricken area of Appalachia that this happens. I don't think I cried, did I? I don't remember, but was I upset? Almost, yes, almost through the entire book, I was upset. It, it's a very upsetting book. Again, that's why I say it's not for everyone. The next one is book that made you happy. Well, many books have made me happy this year, but I am going with another recent read, and that is Andy Weir's Project Hail Mary. What a delight this book was. And after I put that video up, I got a text from my youngest brother saying, hey, Susan, I recommended that book to you like a year ago. But um, he was right. And uh, let me just tell you, if you are if you are staying away from Project Hail Mary because of the science fiction aspect, I know for me, I was concerned that the science would be like so over my head that it wouldn't be enjoyable to read. And it wasn't. It was just so much fun. And it's, I forgot to say in that last video, it's funny too. I listened to it via audiobook and the audiobook is excellent, but I think I would have still gotten the tone of the book had I read, you know, the book book. That was, that was a fun book to read. So it definitely made me happy. Okay, the next one, number 12, most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. I've hardly bought any books this year. I mean, definitely on one hand, if not three or less. We're just, 
I, I, just because I've bought so few, I've been using the library system like nobody's business, and I and I love that. But I'll go with this 75th anniversary edition of Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. So I read this in my, I want to say probably mid-20s. I was living in Florida at the time, so that's apropos to reading this. But and I remember enjoying it, but I don't remember much from it. I have a feeling once I start reading it, things will start coming back to me, but I'm 51. That was a long time ago that I last read this book. And the reason I thought, oh, and I don't have most of the books I read in my 20s and 30s. I used to move a lot. And so I didn't keep, you know, bookcases of books. Uh, so I didn't have that copy anymore. And I wanted to pick it up because I do want to reread this book. And it is a pretty edition. But uh, just know, I, yeah, I've hardly bought any books. Hardly any this year. And then the last question, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? I'm here. I am proclaiming today. It is officially official. I am going to read part two of Don Quixote. I started this book, barely made it through the first part on some, when, when was it? 2021 or 2022? During March of the Mammoths. And it was just, it's just really not my kind of book. I, I think I understand what it's doing. It's just felt very sloggy to me. And I made it, I started the second part and then I just stopped. I'm like, st <laughs> I just love myself too much to feel like <laughs> torturing myself. But I want to have read Don Quixote. And technically, I guess I can't say I have until I've read part two. Even though part two was written like, I don't know, I forget now, but like a decade later or something like that. I feel like I should get to counted and yet I'm I won't uh, uh. so by the end of this year come heck or high water I'm going to finish Don Quixote and put that sucker to bed <laughs> the other one I've been talking about wanting to read this forever and now I finally it was one of the books gifted to me at Christmas I finally have it so I do not want 2024 to go by without having read Anne Rice's interview with a vampire I'm just really curious which way I'm gonna land on this because it could go either way. That's what I said about reading The Lord of the Rings. I'm like, I could see me loving it. I could see me hating it. I'm loving The Lord of the Rings. But I feel the same way with Interview of a Vamp with the, uh, with the Vampire. It's not my normal type of reading. I read very little fantasy or maybe this is technically considered horror. I read very little horror. So, so by the end of 2024, I declare these two books will have been read along with many others that probably are a lot more Susan-esque, but uh, those are the two for that answer. If you uh, would like to share any of your responses to any or all of these questions below in the comments, I always, I love to see what you think about, uh, about the prompts in these tags. So please share with me below, uh, you know, your biggest disappointment or the best book you read this year, or your newest fictional crush, or a favorite author new to you this year. I would just love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below, and uh, we'll wrap this video up here today, and hopefully I will see you again very soon. Bye!